August 7th, 2021. We're in Minnesota. We got a sad one here. You can see this aircraft comes in hard. Fire impacting the homes there. There was three on board. Sadly, they did not make it. So maybe we can see some lessons to be learned. NTSB final report from Victoria, Minnesota. So this is the last frame of that shot where this aircraft came down. You can see the right wings and the horizontal stabilizers are all folded up. And uh, a lot of speed as it came down and stress this aircraft and then there's the fuel vapor trail which caught fire a pilot and two passengers departed on the personal flight the pilot was cleared was trying to land in imc about 10 miles from the runway on final approach the airplane slowed to 80 knots and it triggered the low altitude alarm and the pilot acknowledged then the airplane abruptly turning left entered a steep descent the airplane continued in that left turning spiral and descended below an overcast ceiling the airplane subsequently impacted the ground upright about eight miles west of the airport is what we, what we saw the wings and the right uh, stabilizers were deflected upward in a vertical condition and no pre-accident mechanical failures or malfunctions were found in the engine or airframe that precluded any normal operation the airplane debris on the ground and everything um, showed that an in-flight breakup occurred during the flight so this is that flying cloud airport that they were trying to land in you can see the many lakes around this area in minnesota and they were 10 miles away and then here is that flight path there's those lakes as you can see the altitude and all the turns as it made its uh increasing descent so the airplane's flight path on runway one zero um at flying cloud airport was typical until 1738 about here then the airplane turned right its altitude fluctuating passing um, past the runway heading and began to turn back left which we can see here the left turn tightened and the airplane accelerated and descended during the time the airplane likely passed below the overcast ceiling and the tightening right and left turns were the speeds exceeding all listed maneuvering speeds as that final left turn tightened it exceeded the manufacturer's listed maximum positive load factor and the airplane subsequently suffered an in-flight breakup so this is that breakup into the crash this is the scene um, firefighters definitely you can see they pulled hand lines they wanted to protect exposures you, you can see it, it was burning this house so you want to cool that off make sure none of these trees or anything else turns on fire make sure nobody on the ground was hurt and then try to look for any survivors but you can see this aircraft is in really really terrible shape and it's a very tragic scene the pilots of a king air that landed immediately before the accident were interviewed about the conditions that the airplane encountered and the pilot who flew the approach landed stated that the airplane entered the clouds at about 4500 mean sea level and broke out of the clouds on final approach at about a thousand feet above ground level the pilot who monitored the approach recalled that the airplane entered and broke out of the clouds at altitudes similar to those reported by the pilot flying the monitoring pilot reported that no turbulence had occurred when the airplane was in the clouds so very interesting on the weather side of things here is that meteorological uh, information um, at the time and here NTSB has photos of the propeller and then also the engine which separated from the firewall with cables hoses and wires remaining attached but they have to go through all of these things to try to find a cause very interesting job but must be very difficult and then here is that Mooney M20M November 1566 Zulu is the tail number it was definitely a beautiful aircraft love seeing these Moonies and then here is inside the cab what it looked like it's the hours that it had but very sad indeed of course we got to go over the pilot information 72 year old male 972 hours also with the student pilot 70 hours we're not sure who was in control of the aircraft at the time but those are the three on board and while the pilot was flying the final approach several of his radio transmissions to air traffic control was either delayed or disjointed indicating that the pilot was task saturated um, and definitely had some fluctuations in airspeed 
and the pilot's spatial disorientation led to his loss of airplane control. Spatial disorientation is the vestibular sense in particular can and will confuse the pilot because of inertia. The sensory areas in the inner ear cannot detect slight changes in altitude, nor can they accurately sense altitude changes. So very scary. I, I want to know. I'm sure a lot of you pilots have felt this spatial disorientation at least a little bit while flying. Um, on the other hand, false sensations are often generated, leading the pilot to believe the altitude of the airplane has changed when in fact it has not. And that false sensation is what is the spatial disorientation. So the probable cause is the pilot's loss of airplane control due to that spe spatial disorientation during final approach, which led to a spiral dive that overstretched the airplane and resulted in an in-flight breakup. So very sad on this one. You can let me know some ways that maybe, you know, know i guess more imc training um and ways that you kind of keep yourself oriented while flying if you want to see more ntsb final reports you can always watch it here um, this is our i'll see you guys next time